chairman. I, uh -huh. I have I have her on the phone now. Okay. Well, I'll be ready for the elder in just a minute and tell her we appreciate her being here this morning for us. Okay. TJ, I'm ready. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and the citizens of Douglas County. We will call this February the 2nd, 2021, Board of Commissioners Legislative Meeting to order. Board of Commissioners, if you would uh, please allow me to start with roll call, I would uh, proceed accordingly. District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. District 2 Commissioner and Vice Chairman Kelly Robinson. Present. District 3 Commissioner Charinia Carthen. Present. District 4 Commissioner Ann Guider. Present. Chairman Ramona Jackson Jones. Present. Board of Commissioners, we have a quorum. This morning, Board of Commissioners, we have with us this morning Elder Lalita um, Foster from Daystar Tabernacle International Church. She's here to render our invocation. And once, uh, once Ms. Foster finished the invocation, Board of Commissioners, please, and, and the citizens of Douglas County, please join me in the pledge to the flag. Ms. Elder uh, Lalita Foster, you have the floor. Thank you. You're welcome. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I lift up this meeting before you, and I pray for all the leaders and all those in authority who are in the offices that govern this local city and county. I pray that you will inspire a spirit of cooperation and unity for your word says, oh, how good and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. But there you command the blessings. So I thank you for unity and that despite all differences, differences, all will be on one accord. Father, I thank you, Father God, for that you would give them wisdom, that they may make right choices and godly decisions to accurately discern the issues that are presented before them. I pray they will be respectful of one another, fair, just, and hearing all reasonable voices. Father, I pray that you aid them in representing the people that they were elected to represent and let all things be done decently and in order in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will cause them to be honest and, be, and to conduct their affairs honorably, honorably, ethically, and with integrity. Help them to live upright and morally just lives. May your word be the foundation of their lives and let the, the decisions that they make be in the best interest of the community, God. I pray that you will lead and guide them and cause them and their households to be prosperous, Lord God. I pray that each one of them will be in good health, O oh God, and that, Father God, whatsoever they do in word or deed, let it be done to your glory. I pray, Father God, that they will not lean to their own understanding, but acknowledge you in all of their ways. I pray that this city and county will be prosperous and not stagnant. Let it flourish and let it be a safe place that we may live peacefully and a quiet lives in all godliness and honesty. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Foster, for that powerful prayer. Board of Commissioners, if you could join me with the, uh, in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. Again, um, Elder Foster, uh, we thank you so much for that powerful prayer. And uh, thank you so much. And we are praying for unity and cooperation in Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, uh, uh, first of all, I just want to uh, mention or just uh, share with you that this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to move forward and ask uh, our clerk if we had uh, if we have any public comment this morning. Clerk, do we have any public comment? Chairman, we did not have anyone sign up this morning. However, I would like to ask if there's anyone, any citizens on the line that would like to speak on anything regarding what's on the agenda, only what's on the agenda. Is there anyone? Okay, Chairman, I, I guess not, so I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you so much, Clerk Watson. We're gonna move on Board of Commissioners to our approval of the minutes. 
we have a board of commissioners you have before you the commission minute meeting uh, of January 19, 2021, the work session minutes of January 18, 2021, and the executive session minutes of January 18, 2021. Are there any additions, deletions, or revisions that need to be made? Yes, ma'am, Madam Chair. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, a revision, not to the whole agenda set, but the very end with expense reports. There was, um, if it permits you, I'd like the county attorney to speak to uh, what we spoke about yesterday about um, um, striking um, all associated conversation regarding the expense reports, just the tabling part. Um, and, and he was supposed to get some homework and get back to us. So, Madam Chair, is the county attorney on the con? I, I am, uh, okay. Commissioner Robinson. How you okay. doing, sir? Yep. Uh, so, listen, there. I, I spoke with the clerk. There are three components to this. The first component is the minutes are not the minutes until such time as y'all adopt them. So there are two ways to uh, to uh, correct or fix or adopt a minutes either as is or as corrected or by striking words in the draft because of a parliamentary challenge or because there is an error. So one, uh, y'all can correct the minutes by challenge uh, before they're adopted because they don't become the official minutes until y'all approve them. The second issue is the vote on that is recorded by the clerk pursuant to her uh, job description. And third, the record is uh, whatever the record is digitally, that can't be expunged because it exists and is subject to the Open Records Act. So to answer the first part of your question, the minutes do not stand adopted until y'all bless them. They can be challenged for either correctness or for a parliamentary error in the record. And then whatever y'all uh, approve is what is finally approved as the official minutes. I, I know that's a little convoluted because it's three different components, but I hope that answers your question. Yes, you did. Um, County Clerk uh, and, and to Madam Chair, um, because of a parliamentary challenge, I'd like to strike all conversation regarding just the expense report component of our meeting, the draft meeting minutes before we make a motion to adopt it, um, allowing uh, the actual vote to table, which was defeated, and then it went on to being approved, uh, whatever that record was. County Clerk, are you clear on what's being asked? Uh, can, Commissioner Robinson, can I jump in? Please. So, so uh, under Robert's Rules of Order, when a motion to table that discussion was made, uh, under Robert's Rules, that's not debatable, but a, de a debate incurred I understand from what you're asking, you're asking the debate about the motion to table That's be it. stricken from the record for purpose of approval of these amendment, uh, this, um, these minutes as corrected. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you, Ken. County Clerk? Yes, sir. I've got that. So just to clarify, the there was some discussion after the motion was made to approve the expenses. That stands that that's not what you're speaking of correct just the tabling discussion the table is non-debatable right how we even got to that point mm -hmm. okay i'm clear thank you and, and everything associated with after that until it got defeated then we went into the normal motion to approve so anything associated with that discussion with the approval part stays correct thank All you right. So, so, Commissioner Robinson, uh, Vice Chair, are you making a motion to approve the minutes as corrected subject to that parliament, parliamentary challenge? That is correct. But I had to clarify what we were doing because we needed the, we needed the legal advice first. So sure. now I'm calling, I'm calling for Madam Chair to make the motion based on the correction that we just made. Okay. What Madam, Chair, Chair, Ma Madam mm -hmm. Chair, just so you're clear for the record, uh, you're asking for a motion on Com Vice Chair Robinson's uh, comments about the draft minutes so that we can proceed. And he is legally correct. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to remove the comments about the tabling component? and then also um, to insert vice chair's comments. Madam Chair, I don't think that's it. I, I think you're asking for approval of minutes 
as corrected by the challenge mentioned by Vice Chairman. And if okay. that if that is the motion and seconded, then you can have a discussion about it and, and vote it up or down. Okay. As stated, uh, Board of Commissioners, by our legal counsel, you just heard him, he said to remove the, cha the challenge is what we're looking at. So moved. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a yes, motion. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Commissioner Guider. Uh, could I have uh, the legal counsel explain um, what was illegal? <laughs> Attorney Bernard, if you could explain this as a question. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was talking through a mute button. So under Robert's Rules of Order, when the discussion occurred, there was a motion to table. Under Robert's Rules of Order, a motion to table takes precedent over the main motion and is subject to a motion, a second, but is not debatable. And then a majority would decide the motion to table. In that case, I think it was defeated. But there was a debate held on a motion that's not debatable, and that is what the vice chair has pointed out. So the, the part of the minutes that is pursuant to this motion being corrected under challenge is the part of the debate that occurred on the motion to table only and not anything else. Right. So uh, to reiterate, uh, just so I understand, uh, if you table something, you can't have a discussion on it. No, uh, no but you, you can't have a discussion on a motion to table. When the motion to table was made and seconded, then it should have went to vote on the motion to table. Instead, there was a debate that ensued for a period of time on the motion to table. Under Robert's Rules of Order, a motion to table is non-debatable. So, um, but the motion to table will stay in the minutes, but not the discussion that followed, right? Yeah, the, yes, that, that is the motion to table and the vote will be in the minutes. The discussion will be amended to, uh, and the minutes aren't until y'all approve them, but the draft, those will be taken out and there'll be a record of this motion as presented today in the clerk's records for future minutes because she has to log this vote in as well. But okay, the record but it's of the, the, the record. It's just the, the discussion that's being removed. Is that right? Yeah, the discussion on the motion to table only. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Geiger. Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the table. We have a motion and second. If there's no more discussion, please respond accordingly. We're going to call your district. Okay, Commissioner Robinson. Discuss. Yeah, I, I want to clarify for um, as part of my comments is that. Um, what this was about was about the existence of receipts according to the county's finance policy. Receipts were not required by our finance policy. If those who read it understood it, it said that all expense accounts must be approved all monthly, accompanied by what? Either receipts or monthly statements. The operative word is or. It has nothing to do with credit card, which is a separate function. That's what was being challenged. It is not required. It should have not been taken up. That was the point. I yield the floor, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Madam Board Chair. Commissioner Guider. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I was the one that challenged it. And uh, I did not understand the Roberts rule of order as far as the discussion, but I was challenging the fact that the receipts were inadequately filled out. Uh, and I was, uh, I had <clears throat> addressed it with you prior in that day uh, to please get it corrected because they were incomplete. If you're going to do receipts, they should be completed. But anyway, and that's what I was really challenging. And I thought I made that clear, but so be it. Thank you. I yield back. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Um, 
as so stated, and I believe it's also just in, in and I can't, it's in, in the uh, record from the state, you have to have receipts or that's the, that's the game changer, the word or monthly statements. So you have the two and with credit cards, you do receive monthly statements. So that is something we have to look at uh, in our procedures here in the county. So it's or as well. With Madam that Chair, being said, just okay. To that point, thank you for acknowledging that, Madam Chair, the, the fact that it was either or, right? Mm -hmm. So it, whether it was there or not, didn't matter. Uh, right. It was not required. Not that you would bring it up in a meeting to vote like we're doing now. It right. was not necessary. All right, second point is, again, we want to make sure that everybody has expense reports must be approved according to that, everybody. So I'm, I'm auditing right now to make sure that we all, all of us collectively have put our expense reports on the docket and they're approved. So uh, again, it's, it's self-reporting, self-regulating them, going back and making sure. And so everybody else should look, make sure that all your expense reports were approved uh, monthly as they should have been. So just FYI, Madam Chair, thank you, I yield the floor. Okay. We have a motion and a second on the floor board we have a mo if there's no more discussion we have a motion and a second i'm going to call your district please respond accordingly district one commissioner yes district two yes ma'am district three yes district four yes chairman yes we have a 5 unanimous vote and the motion carries all right board of commissioners we're going to move on to our new business item which is tab number four Appointment of Rita Fasina Thomas to the Douglas County Board of Assessors to fill an unexpired term effective immediately. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion, Board of Commissioners, about this regarding this appointment? We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please proceed accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Chairman, yes. We have a 5-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Board of Commissioners, we're gonna move on to our consent agenda, uh, if that's okay with you all. We're gonna move on and please keep in mind that all these items are, uh, all the tabs are subject to final legal review. Tab number five is authorization to approve engagement with the Malden and Jenkins to perform an operational assessment for probate and clerk of court and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents pending legal review. Tab number six is authorization to accept an anonymous donation in the amount of $4,500 to the fire department and amend the budget. Tab number seven, authorization to renew their agreement with Republic Services for Transportation and Disposable Municipal Solid Waste as recommended by the Purchasing Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number eight, uh, authorization to approve a car allowance agreement for Brenda Davis and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number nine, authorization to cancel solicitation number 20-014 for Lee Road State Route 1161 CR 817 widening and con reconstruction project and reject all bids received as recommended by the Transportation Committee. Tab number 10 is authorization to award asphalt material uh, supply contracts pursuant to solicitation 20-022 to CW Matthews Contracting Company, Incorporation Baldwin um, Paving Company and ER Snail Contractor uh, Inc. for materials purchases by the county for LMIG and in-house resurfacing projects and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 11, authorization to it, uh, issue a task order number one in the amount of $8,100 for Atlas pursuant to the own demand consulting contract to perform early utility coordination on the Lee Road widening project P1000-4428 to be funded from the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Tab number 12, Authorization to approve change order number two on the Turner Middle School sidewalk project construction contract with the Corbett Group LLC in the amount of $22,962.75 to be um, funded from the 2016 SPLOS funds and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. 
Tab number 13, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to consider changing the names of the following roads, Keurig Way, Schofield, Field Road, Grisham Road, uh, pursuant to the request from various property owners. Uh, 14, tab number 14, authorization to approve a contract extension with uh, Spirion for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office for the equipment in inmate work crew, crew vans and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Tab number 15, authorization to approve a memorandum of understanding with Douglas County Travel and Tourism, Inc. and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Last but not least, tab number 16, authorization to approve a change order in the amount of $1,000 with Allen Bell Architect, Inc. for additional soils testings required by the Douglasville, Douglas County Water and Sewer Authority for increasing volume of septic tanks at the new concession building at Villarb and Fair Play Parks to be funded through the 2016 SPLOS funds, funds as recommended by the Parks and Recreation Oversight Committee and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Board of Commissioners, that concludes our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have, okay, we have a motion in a second. Yeah, Board of sure. Commissioners, do you have a, a discussion on any of the topics? Yes, ma'am. Uh huh. Vice Chairman Robinson, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. I've just got two questions, trying to keep it um, obviously tight. Um, I'd like to talk to Director Holman first, followed by Director Valentin. Madam Chair, is Director Holman out there? Yes, uh, Director yes, Holman. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Director Holman, we can we speak to number five, please, regarding the transitional audit? Can you tee that up for us, please? Absolutely. Um, the Malden and Jenkins, their advisor, government advisory services, uh, was asked to um, come in um, and have discussions with uh, the newly elected officials, being the district attorney, the probate judge, and the clerk of court. Um, in order to help facilitate their transition into their new offices, go over some of the things or some items that they want um, to be looked at, analyzed, um, and kind of a blueprint for each of their offices. Um, it started off again, like I said, with the three offices. However, um, Ms. Dahlia Racine, um, the district attorney, uh, she has some ongoing projects going on from the outside that she feels that would facilitate her needs. Um, therefore, she respectfully asked, was very grateful for the opportunity to, to maybe participate in this. However, she said that um, she feels that what she has going on right now uh, would help her um, uh, for right now, that maybe later on she might be interested in something like this. So this proposal has been adjusted um, to remove uh, the DA's office from um, the assessment. And so this only includes the probate judge and her office, as well as the clerk of court's offices. Okay. As, as I spoke yesterday, um, the um, it was asked from Malden and Jenkins to provide uh, different options. Um, option A being a more detailed, greater level of assessment, um, and it had a fee of 50000 uh, Option B, again, um, being 40000 a little bit like moderate level of assessment, and then option C is 30000 uh, with a little bit less hours and level of detail. Um, and so today is just where um, when y'all adopt it, um, or approve it if y'all do, we would need to know which option you would like, uh, y'all would like to uh, have performed. Thank you very much. So, and in, in, in to my peers, this was the last I, um, action item that came out of our finance committee. Uh, with the removal of the district attorney, I probably would have went with uh, B, um, just because of the cost. Um, however, A fits well within um, the confines and, and, and Director Hallman, how do we, what was the amount that was done during Madam Chair's transition before she came on board? Um, what was that amount? I believe it was just around 42,000. 42,000. Um, and um, so in this case, this is roughly about what, $50,000? Do we have any uh, professional service money that would go to something like um, audits or things like that that would offset this? Because the source of this would be contingency um, as normal. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, correct. Uh, we do have around $10,000 in other professional services, so that could be used toward um, this proposal. And then, like you said, any uh, remaining remaining funds would uh, need to be pulled from contingency. So 40000 is roughly what we did last time, correct? So these are two correct. offices versus one. Correct. So two offices versus one to my peers. Um, that's all I had to say. Oh, and the last thing is regarding that is um, uh, legal organ. Uh, speak to that part, how um, they're going to go in and look at the fulfillment of those services. Can you speak to that? Yes, Do sir. Um, yes, sir. Um, as far as the um, review of the legal organ, um, that is going to be incorporated in this proposal, um, mainly because these two offices actually uh, use um, or need a legal organ for all their different advertisements as well. I know the county um, and various departments administratively uses, um, you know, has to do advertisements and such in legal uh, in the legal organ, but these offices as well have to. So in speaking with David Roberts, he said that um, because of that and also just discussing it with us, uh, he could incorporate that in this current pro uh, proposal. All right, so they're going to audit subscribers and all that. See if they fulfill the essence of, of being the legal organ, whatever those two offices have to say, correct? It's correct. That truly is baked in. Okay, all right, so it's no additional cost. It's just part of it as far as auditing. All right, great. Thank you, Director Hallman. I'm going to let that go. All right, uh, I, thank you, Director Hallman. I got to keep going. Yeah, somebody else may have questions for you. Um, I, I want to be sensitive. Uh, Madam Chair, may I have Director Valentin? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, mm -hmm. Commissioner Brown here. Director Valentine, all right. I had a couple, but I'm just going to focus on number 10, the asphalt. Um, just right now, I've gotten a couple of inquiries. I mean, I, I know that people are at home. They're still telecommuting, but that makes them more aware of our road conditions, et cetera. Um, potholes at the end of Riverside and all that. I know these materials are related to that um, as far as that. When can we anticipate um, this year's LMIG to kick off? Uh, when, when do you anticipate and explain the weather and materials and um, all that stuff. Yes, uh, I'd be happy to, Commissioner. Uh, uh, paving uh, has to be done when the temperature is at least uh, 50 degrees. And so we typically would advertise the project and award the contract sometime in April or early May uh, to, to ensure that, uh, uh, that the, um, the temperatures are appropriate for paving. Now, between, um, I guess, perhaps early April to early May, we, if the temperatures are um, sufficient uh, from day to day, we may do maintenance uh, on our own roads and these materials uh, or, or this um, approval would facilitate being able to get those materials. So um, we would start with in-house maintenance earlier, uh, but contracting will probably be sometime in perhaps early May. Early May. So, for example, Slater Mill, uh, which was our HOA of the year, and I'm just using that as an example, that, that would be done, something like a subdivision would be done, what, in-house, or is that something to be done through? The, the uh, it, it depends on, on the specific uh, street, the condition of the road, um, some of the work, if it requires uh, a lot of patching or if it requires milling, then uh, that work would be contracted out. But if it's, uh, if it's a road that uh, doesn't need that and needs minor patching, we can do that in-house. And so we would, that would be done with in-house forces. All right. So I'm speaking to a, a, a whole subdivision as opposed to um, obviously, a, a, a T spot would handle um, everybody else's subdivisions, but I use um, obviously uh, the allocation uh, within my district to fulfill that one. So that probably, because of the magnitude, probably would be um, outsourced um, per se. So we're probably um, April May is that what I heard? Uh, yeah, I, I would. Yeah, I would put the contract uh, probably in May timeframe. Duly noted. All right, that's all I needed. Thank you, um, Director Valentin. Madam Chair, I yield the floor to my peers. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board or, or anyone in particular? Okay, Director. Well, Board of Commissioners, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay, Commissioner Carson. Yes, thank you so much. Um, 
if we could go to item number 15, the memorandum of understanding with the Douglas County Travel and Tourism. And that would be Attorney Bernard. I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, I, I see that the final uh, MOU was, was sent about an hour ago. And there is one particular change that I would like to amend while we're here on the floor. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so if you go to the section um, of the DCT -T MOU section two, the tourism product development. Yes, ma'am. After the very last line, such expenditures may include capital costs and operating expenses. If we could just add comma, excluding salaries so that anyone who's looking at this would not try to incorporate salaries. And this is pursuant to our conversation on yesterday. So that needs to be included in that under section two and under section four as it pertains to TPD, just so that we can keep in line with the capital costs, operating expenses, comma, excluding salaries. Okay. Uh, Madam Carson, we'll be glad to make that change. And Madam Chair, as a point of order, if that's all right with the board, uh, that uh, change can be made as part of this motion without having to amend. I think if everybody will they say they're okay with it. I concur. I concur. Everybody can concur. What about so you, kind of Commissioner Mitchell? So essentially on two and four for purposes of record, it's what you have that I just sent a little while ago with yes. the exception we're adding comma excluding salaries. Yes, sir. I will make that change immediately and get it out. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, Chairman Jones, I yield. Okay. Thank you. I didn't get any uh, concurrence from Commissioner Guider or Commissioner Mitchell. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, um, did we not have a county employee that resigned and went to work for the tourism, um, the, what is it, CTT? DCT. DCT. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, is she getting paid? Because why would she quit a full-time job with the county and then go over to that if she's not getting paid. Do you know who I'm talking yeah, about? I think I have an idea who you're talking about, yes. But I'm not sure, but she should be because we just hired a, a part-time person. Is Dor I know Dorsha Simmons is not on, on the line, uh, president of DCTT, but we just hired a part-time person. Um, yeah. I believe it was, it was administrative person for DCTT. So, do, do they work directly with uh, just for DCTT? Mm hmm. That's that's the intent. So, if, if one 501c, where this is a 501c6, can hire personnel, why can't, why can we not pay, um, use, some of the funds to pay personnel for another one since they're getting the funds from them. Is there a reason? I, I'm just asking, is there a reason for this? Since uh, the 501c6 has a paid personnel. I believe yesterday, Commissioner, when uh, D uh, President Dorsha Simmons um, explained it to us, she said this particular uh, portion there cannot, uh, we can't pay an, an another agency. I'm not sure about uh, someone that's working directly for DCTT, but another agency's salaries cannot be paid out of that, which we were doing it wrong, is my understanding. It was not being done the correct way. However, we're looking at, uh, there is 37% of unrestricted funds that's related to hotel motel tax that's already built into uninc, in the uninc, and that was something that the finance committee is gonna take a look at in terms okay. of okay so that's where we that's why uh, commissioner carson is making that correction <laughs> okay okay uh so, i just didn't understand why one yes. of them 
have paid a salary out of the funds, but then the others could not because um, I don't know how many people work at the uh, other entities, the museum, the cultural arts center, but I'm sure that a lot of them do not work, just volunteer work. So if you're working full time and it, it is the, um, it's the first stop that someone that's visiting Douglas County might make. So anyway, I yield back. I just did not understand it. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. When I call your district, please respond accordingly. District one. Yes. District two. Yes, ma'am. District three. Yes. District four. Yes. Okay, and Chairman, yes, we have a 5 0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. All right. I, Board of Commissioners, thank you so much. Uh, I see Jennifer Holman's hand up. Um, Jennifer, I'm, are you, did you mean to have yes. your hand raised? Okay. Yes, yes I just wanted to make sure that um, I was clear on which option that the board was going to be choosing in regarding to the Malden and Jenkins operational assessment. I know, uh, Commissioner Robinson, we kind of touched over the different options, but I don't know if I heard which option that I can give uh, David Roberts with Molly and Jenkins the green light on. I just want to make sure I'm clear. I, I said option A in my comments, so that's of record. So. Gotcha. Okay. Option A. Thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, at this time, do you have any, are there any announcements that you would like to make or any remarks before I close out with the closing announcements? Okay. Board of Commissioners uh, and citizens of Douglas County, we have free COVID-19 testing, and it is uh, this testing is still being offered at the Deer Lake Park at 2171 Mack Road, Douglasville, Georgia. Drive-through testing is Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., uh, and no appointment is necessary. For, uh, for more information, please visit douglasvillecovid.com or call 678-909-4909. Board of Commissioners, most re recently, David, um, not David, but uh, we had a report that uh, from our uh, <coughs> economist, Joey E. Smith, Dr. Joey E. Smith provided an update on Douglas County. And uh, right now it is uh, Douglas County uh, in terms of unemployment is not faring um, as well as the as our other neighboring counties and at this time just wanted to share with you that during the great recession there were less than 10,000 initial unemployment claims in the region or and right now compared to 80,000 unemployment claims uh, which is at the peak of the COVID-19 that really uh, really is the telltale sign that uh, a pandemic is far worse as I've always mentioned than a great recession. Douglas County's unemployment rate right now is hovering around 6%, and that is higher than the state average and the metro area average. But uh, it is not, uh, it could be worse. Um, our uh, average last year about this time, or should I say in 2019, was hovering around 3.8%, and now we at 6%. Um, we have noticed that the, we have lost, so you would, uh, Please be aware we've lost about 5,298 jobs in Douglas County, um, and those are mainly related, related to service jobs. Uh, our construction jobs still remain stable. Our retail is flat. Um, I'm encouraging everyone, please, to continue to shop local. Uh, the housing market is doing well. It's building pretty well for right now. It's really a seller's and a buyer's market. So Board of Commissioners, we just wanted to just put that information out to uh, just give us just a pulse check to, to, to kind of see what the economy is doing here in Douglas County. We have had about 80, 880 new jobs that was added to uh, the county last year. Uh, we had about um, $800,000 worth of uh, economic development that came through the county, almost near a million. Uh, not as much as we've done in the past because it was a little slow of some of the new industries that we added. I uh, wanted to keep in mind and just wanted to make the citizens aware, Douglas County, that we are 
uh, the Board of Commissioners, we hear you loud and clear. We know that uh, the it's beginning, uh, becoming very tight, and we are looking at some uh, community stability uh, needs to provide some uh, assistance to our citizens in the uh, very near future, hopefully, hopefully within the next 14 days. We are working on getting that uh, uh, this money to some community partners and wanted to make our citizens aware we are working diligently to take care of their needs uh, to address some of their concerns. We've received quite a few phone calls, and when I say we, I know myself in the office here, uh, the main office, we've received calls um, uh, from citizens needing assistance with rental assistance and uh, your utility and your water assistance. We hear you loud and clear. We are at a point in about 14 days or so, uh, we should have some relief for you. And that information will be publicized, and we will make sure that you have clear directions on where to go to 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 try to reach and, and obtain some assistance. I do want to add that I received some very positive information this morning from our uh, EMA director, our emergency medical uh, uh, management uh, director, Jason Milholland. We have now secured a location uh, for our mass vaccinations, and uh, the location is at the old Sears uh, store uh, in the Arbor Place Mall we will utilize that parking lot. There's a, enough space for our citizens to come in, drive through once everything is set up. But I want to remind our citizens and also Board of Commissioners, we are still uh, um, struggling with trying to obtain enough uh, vaccine uh, vials to allow us to uh, vaccinate our uh, citizens. And that is not only in um, Douglas County, but it's in the, across the nation. So we have secured a, a spot uh, as of this morning. We will be utilizing the Sears uh, parking lot location, and, and that parking lot area is very large, and we are excited about that. This is good news to our, uh, the Board of Commissioners' ears, but we just I wanted to just remind our citizens we still need a little more time because we are still trying to secure enough um, vaccine uh, products. Um, again, I'll close out with the three Ws. Citizens, if you would just continue to with the three W's, wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, wash, um, watch your social distancing and wear a mask, it is critical. And it was brought to my attention yesterday that what we are noticing in our government buildings that uh, our, we're beginning to become a little relaxed. I'm urging everyone please to wear your mask when you're outside of your offices or and also our visitors, anyone visiting government buildings, particularly Douglas County government buildings, you need a mask. It is required when you walk into our buildings. Um, Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before us, um, we will consider this meeting adjourned and have uh, a good day. Thank you. I'm going to and Chair, you're in recess until this evening. Oh, yes. I keep. Well, this meeting is not adjourned. Con consider this meeting in recess. We'll see you all again at 6 p.m. for our planning and zoning meeting.